guest was there at the impeachment hearing, and he said it's all a bluff. We're here because of meth. That's what this is about. They can't save Donald Trump. They can't take away the two impeachments and the four indictments, but they can try to put some numbers on the board for Joe Biden. But the problem is when you sling mud, you got to have mud. If you all think there's so much evidence, we're here, call the vote on impeachment. Impeach him right now. I dare you. Joining me now is Florida Congressman Jared Moskowitz. Jared, a little Katie Porter channeling going on there with that whiteboard. Very impressive. Um, look, we know that there was this last-ditch effort. It worked to stave off a full-scale government shutdown. I'm really interested, as I am a fellow Floridian with you, that $16 billion in disaster relief. You just heard Becca Ballant at the beginning of the show talking about how important that was for her state in Vermont because of the recent flooding. So that managed to make it through. So talk about that, please. Well, thanks, Katie. Thanks for having me. Yeah, that was a must for me. I had, you know, let uh, my friends across the aisle know that that was an absolute must. I had traveled actually to Hawaii with Speaker McCarthy uh, to view that damage since I'm a, the only former emergency management director uh, in all of Congress. Uh, and so, yeah, that was hugely important. It was hugely important for Florida, for Vermont, for the fires in Hawaii, and for the future disasters that haven't yet happened. We're still in hurricane season. It's why I filed that standalone bill two months ago when FEMA said that the disaster recovery fund was going to run out of money. The idea that cities, counties, states would not be able to get the reimbursement money for response recovery, the idea that individuals would not get that individual assistance dollars because the U.S. government did not fund FEMA correctly. FEMA is the agency that helps people in its time of need, and it's a bipartisan agency because disasters don't care what party you belong to. And so that was a must for me. I'm glad we passed that on a bipartisan basis. Yeah, and Congressman, I did want to shift gears to what is being called, and by the way, I'm going to use Republicans' actual words now, the clown show, disgraceful and pathetic, and then I'm going to use your phrase, political impeachment malpractice hearing that happened a few days ago on Thursday. What new lows do you expect Chairman Comer and others to kind of pull off going from here? Well, first of all, who holds an impeachment hearing when you have no evidence on the guy you want to impeach? I mean, look, they've been working on this for the last eight or nine months. This wasn't the first hearing. They've had like six or seven of these. So now they decide to open, to rebrand it, to hit the video game reset button and go with impeachment inquiry. Okay, fine. So they hold this impeachment inquiry and they don't come with a new single piece of evidence. They, they just presented the same stuff they're presenting for eight or nine months. So the idea that we wouldn't be prepared on how to handle that, since we know it all, we know what they were going to say, uh, is ludicrous. By the way, they called a witness, Professor Turley, who they call all the time. What does mm -hmm. he say in his opening statement in the first two minutes of the hearing? He says, with everything we know at this juncture, every shred of evidence they've presented, every accusation they have made, everything they have put on social media and Fox News, with all of that said, here's what we know. It doesn't rise to the level of impeachment on Joe Biden. Right out of the gate, he says, you don't have the goods. And so look, this is all about Hunter. They want to go after Hunter, the sins of the sun. They want to put that on. Uh, onto Joe, but that's not what high crimes and misdemeanors are uh, uh, in this country. And so, yeah, look, it was a clown show for them. It was an absolute utter disaster, which is actually why I'm glad they funded FEMA, because they're going to need FEMA's help to bail them out of the impeachment disaster uh, that they created for themselves. It wouldn't surprise me if Comer doesn't have another impeachment hearing for some time. So, Jared, I got less than a minute, but I did want to ask, as a lawyer, I my currency is evidence, and you just said there was no evidence. I was curious about this. Why won't the committee, Republicans, allow you guys to subpoena Rudy Giuliani and Lev Parnas, the people that were actually trafficking in the lies that have been debunked by now? I know that you guys wanted to subpoena them to appear to account for those lies. Why are the Republicans standing in the way? 
oh, listen, they're never going to let us, you know, control the hearing, obviously, uh, except they forget that we get 50 percent of the time. I mean, that was they, they forgot, like if we conduct an impeachment inquiry, the Democrats are going to get 50 percent of the time. Like somehow they forgot that. But this is all they've gotten their instructions down from Donald Trump from Truth Social. Right. He's got two impeachments. He's got four indictments. He's got half of the impeachments in American history. And he is 100 percent of the indictments in American history for a president. And so he's told them, you guys gotta muddy up Joe Biden because I don't wanna be the only guy with all of this stuff. And so that's what they're doing here. But yeah, look, they're not gonna let us call the witnesses that got them into this mess. You know, they're not gonna let us call Jared Kushner, who by the way, got $2 billion from a foreign government when he worked in the West Wing. So no, they're not gonna let us do that, but we're gonna point that hypocrisy out which is why they have no credibility other than just trying to please Donald Trump so they can be invited to the sleepover at Mar-a-Lago. Oh, Congressman Jared Moskowitz, always bringing the fire. Appreciate you being here. Thanks. Thanks, Katie.